the theme of handstand, hang time, is an exploration of the L shape, a particular shape in the body that helps to facilitate stability and balance. Namaste everyone. Welcome to another episode of On The Mat. With us this week is Sherlyn. And Sherlyn is going to take us into a 45-minute sequence that is focusing on what we were practicing in last week's classes. As well this week, we are very fortunate to have the contribution of Kenko. Kenko is an instant fruit and vegetable smoothie company that has very generously contributed a box of smoothies which comes with its own plastic bottle shaker. Along with that, we are also giving away a few class packages that then allow you to explore attending classes with us online on Zoom with from any part of the world that you are in. So please check the link in the description below which also has explanation and instructions on how you can participate and win these beautiful prizes. This will be a full body practice that will then lead you to the muscle memory and the proprioception required to the handstand in an L shape. If that sounds nice, let's start our practice by lifting the right knee up to the chest and clasping the knee with both your hands. Think about pulling that right knee towards the right shoulder as you keep the left leg extending downwards so that you are creating length. So already start to understand the length that we want in the body. As you send your left heel down to the bottom of the mat, send the crown of the head up towards the top of your mat. In this grounding, there is also a beautiful pressing of the lower back down. So there is no distance between lower back and the mat. Try to find this shape and understand this shape from the inside. Good. Next, let's come directly to the extended hand to big toe pose. So grab the big toe with the peace fingers and thumb of the right hand and extend the leg upwards. Now those of us that have really tight hamstrings might find that it is not very manageable to do so. Then feel free to keep a micro bend in the right knee to help support the tightness in the hamstrings and makes the pose a lot more manageable. Or you can take the option to incorporate the use of a strap a towel to hold the foot and then the hand holds the towel or strap instead. Think about grounding the right hip and pulling the right shoulder downwards towards the mat so that you have stable shoulders and hips and you are using the mat as a guide to understand what it means to have that beautiful shape in the body. Good. Now for the next few moments, can you release your big toe but keep the leg extending in that position and start to connect with your breath. Inhale, lift the arms upwards, all the way up overhead. Exhale, bring the arms downwards. Good. Let's do four more. Inhale, connect the breath with the movement, expanding the rib cage. Exhale, Pull the navel in and press the lower back to the mat. Inhale, third one. As you lift the arms up, lower back not lifted from the mat. Exhale. Good, and keep the rising of the right leg lifted upwards. One last breath in. And start to lift the fingers as if doing a handstand, pressing the imaginary wall above you. Good, exhale. As you bring the arms down, you can switch your legs. Left knee to the chest, hold the knee with the hands. Take the next few moments again, pulling that left knee in towards the left shoulder. Good. Again, the attention is to find length. By sliding the right foot, the right heel slides downwards towards the bottom of your mat. The crown of the head slides upwards towards the top of your mat. With this lengthening movement, find a grounding of the lower back. And then start to extend your left leg, holding on to the big toe with the peace fingers and thumb. Extend as straight as your hamstrings allow you to go. 
or take the option to use a strap. Again, try bringing the left shoulder down towards the mat, grounding that shoulder. Try moving that left hip down towards the mat, squaring that hip. Try maintaining the contact between the lower back and the mat. And always with that lengthening you are trying to create from the crown of the head to the back foot. Good. Now release your big toe and keep the leg exactly in that position, awakening the muscles in the front of your hip. Next, inhale, arms upwards again. Good. Exhale, the arms come down. Try to awaken your ujjayi, the sound in the breath like the ocean. Inhale. So constrict the muscles in your throat. Give a gentle firmness there. Exhale, the arms come down and in accordance with your breathing. Third one, inhale, rising upwards. Good. Open shoulders but connect the core. Exhale, the arms come downwards. Inhale as you bring the arms up, lift your fingers, extend your wrists. Good. Pressing that imaginary floor above you. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one that's really slowly the arms come down and both legs down. Okay, with the knees to the chest, hold with both hands. You can rock your way up to seated position or just turn to roll to the side. Find your way up and let's come to tabletop, hands and knees pose. As you do so, crawl the arms forward to send your way down to. Send yourself down to puppy pose. So today your puppy pose is done a little bit differently than what you are normally used to. You want to bring that same connection between the front ribs and hips. You want to imagine that you are still lying face up on the mat. You are pressing that lower back against that mat and you are recreating the lengthening feeling from the tailbone to the hands in front of you. Additionally, maybe even start to lift up your fingers to find your handstand hands. Good. And as you open up your shoulders, Stay stable in your shoulders by trying to wrap your triceps. You are trying to hug the arms inwards towards each other, but at the same time, you are trying to broaden outwards across your shoulders. Good. For five, four, three, two, and one. A beautiful rock forward again to tabletop. Walk the hands back. Stack the hands on the mat underneath the shoulders and knees underneath the hips, feeling nice and open in the shoulders. Good. Let's continue to prep our shoulders. On the inhale, allow the chest to sink down to the space between the arms. You keep the arms straight as you do so. Exhale, push the heart strongly away from the mat. Find broadness across the shoulders. Try again. Inhale to sink the chest. Exhale to push away from the mat. Good, we keep the spine stable as we do so. Inhale, sink, and this is a retraction in your scapula. Exhale, push, and find protraction. Broad, broad shoulders. Next, inhale, can you shrug? That means lift the shoulders up towards the ears. And next, exhale, shoulders away from the ears and lengthen the neck. Inhale, lift the shoulders, you elevate your scapula. Exhale, shoulders down, you depress your scapula. One more breath. Inhale, lift upwards. And exhale, come downwards. Good. So ensure that your palms are always flat on the mat. Your fingers are spread but not too wide apart. You are rooted down to the four corners of each of your palms. This is a Hasta Bandha, a firm and stable foundation on your hands. From Hasta Bandha, now explore the movement we just did on our shoulders incorporating all four movements into a beautiful rotation. Inhale first, allow the chest to sink and lift the shoulders up towards the ears. Exhale, pushing the heart away from the mat and pull shoulders down away from the ears. Okay, so at your own pace now, see if you can blend all four movements into rotational movement of your shoulders. Good. 
If you are not familiar with this movement, you can start by breaking up the movement like what Sherlin is doing into four definable stages. Eventually, one continuous beautiful circular motion. Very nice. Finding the full range of motion, you might even lean the body forward slightly more to take more weight into the hands. One tip is if you can, be lighter in the heels of the palms and this can help to support your wrist and avoid too much strain that might happen there. Now try the circular movement the opposite way. Yes. <laughs> okay, once again, start step by step. Okay. A lot easier in one direction and a little bit more challenging in the opposite direction. But we try to equalize this and find a full range of movement. That is really nice, Shalin. Very nice movement here. Create a lot of stability just by this very simple practice. Create a lot of awareness. Good. And then back to neutral spine, neutral shoulder position. From here, curl the toes under the feet and lift your knees an inch off the mat. Start to hover the knees. Beautiful. And in this pose, incorporate your firm and stable palms, your straight arms, broad, broad shoulders that are actively pushing away from the mat but not rounding the back. The spine is still straight. Lengthen from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Hug your thighs inward so the legs are active. Then take your left foot, right foot back, transition your weight to a plank pose position. Good. Same attention here. Strong, strong muscles. Hugging everything inwards towards the center line, but broadening outwards across your shoulders. From plank pose, let's take it to a downward facing dog. Inhale. Good. Take a moment to paddle out the feet, left and right, heels and toes, one knee bent, opposite leg straight, switching and switching. Maybe the hips sway side to side like a dog wagging a tail or one shoulder towards the mat at a time. Find your way of prepping your legs and shoulders and side body. Good, we're ready. From downward facing dog to plank pose, inhale. Stack the shoulders over the wrist. Connect ribs with hips. From plank pose to downward facing dog. Push back with your strong shoulders. Inhale. Again to plank. Exhale. And from plank to down dog. Inhale. Good. Exhale. Plank. Five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale. Down dog. One, two, three, four, and five. Exhale, plank, five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, down dog, two, three, four, and five. Now as you exhale to plank, take your option to come down to Chaturanga, a low push-up. Your choice of practice. And then strong push from the arms to downward facing dog. Good. Again, rocking forward to plank with the option of coming down for a low push-up. Chaturanga Dandasana. Keep the elbows hugging close. And push back strongly to downward facing dog. Inhale. Let's do two more. Exhale. To plank or low push-up. You can also bring knees to the mat to support. Inhale. Push back strongly from the shoulders and triceps to down dog. Last one. Exhale. Elbows bent. Inhale. Push back, straight spine and heels grounding. Inhale, tiptoes, let's lift the hips up high now. And exhale, knees to chest, looking forwards at the space in front of you on the mat. Next inhale, we step carefully to the front, please. Left foot, right foot forwards, take a halfway lift and lengthen your spine. Exhale, forward bend, let's bring belly down towards thigh, chest towards knee and chin towards shin. Good. Next, inhale, rise up to standing position. Today, we are mindful not to back bend. Find the support in the front body. Connect ribs to hips so that as your shoulders open and the arms lift, you are still imagining that you are pressing the lower back to the mat as if you were reclining. Good. Exhale, come down to the mat, forward bending. Inhale, halfway lift, look upwards. Good. And as you step back, 
your left leg high lunge pose inhale rise up take a few breaths in your lunge again your attention here is to be mindful of the connection between the front ribs and the hips the lengthening of the tailbone downwards and as you incorporate the strength of the shoulders to lift the arms up opens the chest and shoulders not compromising that beautiful length in your spine good extend upward strongly to the arms you can think about broadening across the shoulders as you hug the arms inwards and wrap your triceps as well incorporate all the alignment that we have just talked about exhale hands down good take your right foot back to a three-legged dog position right foot back three-legged dog beautiful in your three-legged dog as you lift up your right leg avoid lifting up your right hip stay as well with that beautiful length in the body your strong supported shoulders and the foundation on your palms and that will do exhale tuck the right knee to the chest and as you find your tuck today mindful not too much rounding of the back set the right foot on the mat in front of the body one more high lunge pose inhale rise upwards good now with the breath exhale come down to the mat inhale three-legged dog exhale tuck set the foot down and one last time strong front leg straight back leg lift upwards and that will do exhale as you bring the hands down step back to plank and from plank decide if you want to do a vinyasa or just arrive at downward facing dog your vinyasa can be a knees chest chin or a low push-up your low push-up can be supported with knees on the mat from down dog come up and tip toes inhale good bring knees to chest and looking forwards exhale stay with straight spine inhale stepping carefully to the front of the mat left foot right foot forwards in a halfway lift look up and lengthen your body exhale forward bend belly towards thigh chest towards knee and chin towards chin inhale rise up to standing mindful of the front body connection recreate the muscle memory of what the body was doing on the mat exhale come down forward bending take a halfway lift inhale good now step your right foot back exhale to find high lunge pose inhale rise up and we stay for a few breaths attention today on creating that same length good you can understand this as a gentle firmness in the lower belly or if there is a string tied between the ribs and the hips preventing them from opening and stretching or you can understand this as a lengthening of the tailbone downwards to maintain space in the lower back or you can understand this as you are still lying on the mat and trying to press that lower back down exhale the hands come down to the mat step back to a three-legged dog position inhale again attention in squaring your hips as you lift your left leg you are not lifting your left glute find your stable stable hips and the height of that top leg good this awakens all the muscles along the length of your back you are finding your posterior chain another very important set of muscles for your inversion exhale tuck the knee to the chest with control now work with the breath inhale step the foot forwards and rise up to a high lunge pose exhale the hands come down to the mat and the left leg goes back again inhale come up good again find your tuck position exhale set the foot down again high lunge pose inhale now as you bring hands down on the exhale step back to plank decide to do one vinyasa or just come to downward facing dog vinyasa is a chaturanga followed by an up dog or cobra then arriving in down dog with a straight spine and heels to the mat good come up and tiptoes on the inhale bring knees to chest looking forwards exhale next inhale walk jump or float your choice good exhale forward bend 
Inhale, rise up towards the ceiling. Give the arms a big, beautiful stretching upwards. And exhale again. Come down to the mat. Forward bending. Now take a halfway lift. Inhale. Good. On the exhale, step your left foot halfway back, keeping both legs straight. Ground the back heel inwards towards the center and find the squaring movement of the hips by bringing the left hip forwards and the right hip back. Take one breath to look up and lengthen the body. Exhale, full. Belly comes down towards thigh, chest towards knee, and chin towards shin. Let's take five beautiful breaths here and focus on creating length for your right hamstring. Good. Parasvatanasana Pyramid Pose. Let's take a halfway lift. Inhale. Now bend your front knee. Have the knee stacked above the ankle of the foot. Your left foot goes back as far as you are able to maintain squareness of the hips. As you inhale, rise up, lifting both arms as if coming to a warrior one. But we do something slightly different today. Exhale, extending the arms forward and make your body one line from the back heel all the way to the fingertips. Good, and even lifting the fingers to find your hands, then hands in this position. In so doing, taking a few moments, really awakening the line of your posterior chain. And taking that extension upwards all the way now to the full expression of Vira Vadrasana 1, Warrior 1. Palms together or separate the hands if the shoulders feel tight, lifting the gaze. Let's release, bring the hands down to the mat. Now as you take the right foot back slowly, can you micro bend the arms and balance the right knee on the shelf created in the right tricep, closer to the elbow, good for a one-legged crow. You can choose to just keep your left foot on the mat like what Shalin is doing. Try to be as light as you can. But if you feel strong, left leg lifts. Take your time here to establish that beautiful straight line that we were exploring earlier. Good. 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 Now let's bring the right foot back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Take a breath in to open up to an upward facing dog. And then going back, down dog with a straight spine. Beautiful. The one-legged crow is optional. Again, you have the option to just keep the back foot touching the mat to support your practice. You still gain benefits. Come up to tiptoes. Inhale. Knees to chest and looking forwards. Exhale. Next, inhale, you walk, jump or float to the front. Take a halfway lift. Next, exhale, forward bend. Good. Inhale to rise up towards the ceiling, reaching the arms upwards. And here, feeling the engagement now in all four sides of the body, front and back, and the length of both your sides. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift. And then on the exhale, step your right foot halfway back, keeping both feet flat and grounded. Square the hips and look up with one deep breath in. And exhale, start to fold. Maintaining a healthy length of your spine here as you explore opening up your hamstring. With the understanding here, the more openness you give to your hamstring, the easier is your work when it comes to setting yourself up, finding your stack in your inversion, catching the balance. Such a big aspect of an inversion practice then. So we spend one more breath here, a deep breath in to the body. Good. Exhale. Next inhale, we come up 45 degrees again. First bend your front knee, stack it above the ankle of the foot, keep the back heel grounding, and think about creating a straight line from the back heel all the way to the upper body and the arms extending. Good. Maybe even lift your fingers, extending the wrists, hands, then hands. Then with the next inhale, carefully lifting the upper body. Vira Vedrasana for five, four, 
three, two, and one as you bring the hands down, micro bend the arms, keep the elbows hugging close and your shoulders broad. Have the left knee resting on the tricep, good, and rock the body forward, support with your strong arms to make the right leg as light as possible, touching the mat with the toes or extending upwards for one legged crawl. Good. Left foot back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling to down dog pose with the straight spine and the heels on the mat. Take a few breaths in down dog pose. Even the down dog is establishing that beautiful muscle memory we are trying to create for our inversion. Hasta Bandha, the foundation of the hands, rooted down to the four corners. Even you try to root both feet down to the four corners. You are pulling the thighs back to lengthen the spine from the hands to the tailbone. But you stay with the support in the shoulders and the core. The wrap of the triceps as you hug the arms inwards, the thighs hugging inwards as well. But even as you hug the arms inwards, you broaden outwards across your shoulders. Inhale, tiptoes. Exhale, knees to chest, looking forwards. Next, inhale to walk, jump or float to the front, land lightly. And exhale to forward bend. Good, and then coming up towards the ceiling, inhale, reaching the arms upwards with length. And exhale, hands to the heart center, Samastitihi. Finding the foundation now on your right leg, inhale, take a moment to lift and spread your toes on the right foot. Good. Rock left and right to find the four corners of that foot. So just like Hasta Bandha or the hand lock. Exhale to bring all five toes down and grow roots to that foot as you then lift the knee to the chest, left leg lift, inhale. Good. With the left hand, you have the option to hold the knee to keep the leg in the tuck position or you can grab the big toe with the peace fingers and thumb. Take a breath in and lengthen up to the crown of the head. Good. On the exhale, you can stay holding on to that knee or explore extending your left leg to Udhida Hasta Padang Gustasana, extending hand to big toe pose. Good. As we explore this, ensure the stability of your shoulders and hips by bringing that left shoulder back and keeping the length of both sides of your body. Using your strong back muscles to maintain a straight spine, which is neither leaning forwards nor back. The straight leg is optional. Don't feel that you need to straighten. Good. Your top priority is your vertical spine. When you're ready, let's bring both hands to the heart and slowly swing that left foot back to make a transition to Vira Padrasana 3, Warrior 3. And stay for the next few moments as well here. So maintain the continuity of your breathing. You want the length that you are creating to persist. So from the back of the foot to the crown of the head, create length. Good. Keep the core stable by maintaining that front rib connection with your hips and avoid the upper body dropping in this position. Bring the hands down to the mat. And as you bring the hands down, walk them forward so that they stack underneath your shoulders. If that means that you are off the mat, you might instead walk your right foot back. Okay. With the palms flat, again, root it down to the four corners of your hands. In Hasta Bandha, tiptoe the right leg and try to find the height of the hips. At the same time, rock the body forward so that you try to stack the hips as best as you can over your foundation. Maintain strong shoulders with a beautiful push from the mat. And now start to explore gently kicking with the bottom leg as you swing with the top leg. Let's do this four times. Good. And your attention in this first round is how to maintain stability of shoulders and hips. The squareness of the hips, the broadness of the shoulders. After the fourth one, let's move back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhaling to upward facing dog. Exhale to down dog with a straight spine. 
Good. Inhale brings you up to tiptoes. Exhale, bring both knees to chest and looking forwards. Next breath, to walk, jump or float to the front. Land lightly and exhale, forward bending. Good. Rise up to standing, give ourselves a big beautiful stretch. Again, attention to the connection between the front ribs and hips. Exhale, gently bring hands down and prepare to balance now on your left foot. Inhale, lift and spread your left toes. Again, awareness of the foundation. Exhale, bringing the toes down, locking the foot to the mat. Inhale, right knee lifts. Good, choose to hold on to the knee or grab the big toe with the peace fingers and the thumb. One breath to create length from the foundation to the crown of the head. One breath to establish the right leg, slowly extended forwards with control. And the right leg extending should not compromise the alignment you are trying to create in the upper and lower body. Good. Your squared shoulders and the length in both sides of the body. For five, four, three, two, and one. Now with both hands at the heart, try your best to swing the right leg back straight. Avoid touching the mat and the body like a seesaw maintains its beautiful length until it comes down parallel with the mat in warrior three. Established in this beautiful stable shape of the body. Understanding how to maintain length and support. Good. Connecting an active core with strong stable hips legs and shoulders. Now release the hands, come down to the mat, lifting the back leg a little bit higher. Good. Ensure that the shoulders stack over the wrists. Tiptoe the bottom leg to stack the hips over your shoulders as best as you can. Coordinate the swing of one leg with the kick of the opposite leg and do this four times with the attention on a trying to do this as stably as possible. Recruiting all the muscles and making sure they work in unison and once you have done four, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good. Come up on tiptoes. Inhale, a straight spine. Exhale, knees to chest and looking forwards. Next, inhale, walk, jump or float again. Next, exhale, forward bend. Again, as you rise up, mindful to stay connected between front ribs and hips. Nice length in the lower back. That's beautiful. Exhale, come down, standing position, and prepare to balance again on the right leg. Inhale, lift your left knee up. Good. Place both hands on the hips this time and extend your left foot. Take your option to continue to find a tuck position if that feels more manageable for your body. Stay like this with a strong front of the hip engagement, awakening and conditioning these muscles. Very beneficial for your inversion. Good. Again, make that same transition as you swing that left leg back, keep it straight, upper body comes down to counterbalance like a seesaw. But this round you can bring the hands down to the mat early and walk the hands down, down and back in line with the toes to find your standing split. Good. Stay on your foundation as now work on finding the height of your top leg. If you feel stable, you might even use one hand to pull the bottom leg in closer to the body, to pull the body closer to your bottom leg. As you find the height of the top leg, mindful to maintain the squareness of the hips. You are not lifting your left buttock as you lift your left leg. In understanding how to hug your legs inwards to help to achieve that stability in the body. Now take a halfway lift again. Inhale. Stack your hands underneath the shoulders. Broad, broad shoulders. Tiptoe the bottom foot. This time on the exhale, you will instead try to kick and switch your legs coming down to the opposite leg. And let's do this four times. Good. Beautiful. And as you kick, you are trying to stack your hips as best as you can over the shoulders and you maintain strong shoulders all the way through. Finishing in Chaturanga Dandasana. 
Good. Inhaling upward dog. Exhaling downward facing dog. Inhaling tiptoes. Exhaling with knees to chest, then looking forwards. Next, inhale to walk, jump, or float. Good. Next, exhale, forward bending. Inhale, rise up to standing. Open chest, open shoulders, but connected core. Yes. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, lift your right knee up in a tuck position. Exhale, you stay tucked or you extend your leg. Your option, your choice of practice. But your job is neither to lean forwards nor back. Let's take one more breath to find out how high we can lift that right leg. <laughs> okay. Exhale, now swing the leg back slowly, slowly. And have the hands come down to the mat. Walk the hands back in line with the foot. Stay there or use one hand to leverage yourself deeper into the standing split. As you lift your top leg, mindful to understand that squaring movement, it is a stabilizing movement. And you are also working to deepen the hamstring stretch. One last breath. Good. Nice and active in that top leg. Now stack the hands underneath your shoulders. Strong arms pushing strongly from the mat. Lifting up the tiptoes, send the hips forward and already even trying to stack. Jump and switch four times. When you have completed, one vinyasa to downward facing dog. Good. This is not just a movement in the legs, but it is also a strong push from the arms from a stable foundation on your hands. Broaden across the shoulders. Good. Coming up on tiptoes, inhale. Bringing knees to chest, looking forwards, exhale. Next breath to walk, jump or float to the front. Exhale to forward bend. Good. As you rise up again, connected core, connected core, but open and active shoulders. Good. Exhale. This time, keep the arms extending and start to bring the left knee to the chest. Good. Let's have some handstand hands. That means extending at the wrist, lifting the fingers as if you are pressing the imaginary floor, which is above the body. Inhale, start to extend left foot. Stay with the breath. We hold for five, four, three, two, and one. See if you can stay stable as you rock that left leg back. Keep it as straight as you can without touching the mat. Body counterbalances and as parallel as you can with the mat. Make your body good, strong shoulders. As you push that imaginary floor, think about hugging the arms inwards, but broaden the shoulders outwards. And let's release, bringing the hands down and lifting the back leg higher. Again, you have the hands stacked underneath the shoulders. And as you tiptoe the bottom leg, you are trying to bring the hip forward and support this with your strong arms. Now in this third round, you can be jumping and switching, kicking up, or if you can, catch the balance and find Adho Mukha Vriksasana, handstand pose. Let's take a few tries to kick our way up. And if we catch the balance, then beautiful. Good. Again, you can be supported with the wall behind you. And if you land against the wall, avoid staying on the wall. Instead, you will be, if you are using the wall to support your practice, try to move away from the wall and catch a balance on your hands. Beautiful, beautiful practice, Shalin. Now do one vinyasa to downward facing dog. Good. Now come up and tiptoes. Inhale. Knees to chest, looking forwards. Exhale. Next, inhale to walk, jump or float to the front. Good. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, rise up to standing. 
stay connected, hollow body position, exhale forward bend, good, take a halfway lift, inhale, and one deep forward bend, exhale, so allow the breath to come back to normal and natural, give ourselves a big beautiful stretching upwards, inhale, arms up, Good, and let's do this one more time. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, deepen the forward bend. And inhale, rise up to standing. Deep, long breaths to regain your composure. Exhale. Keep the hands up <laughs> and extend the wrist. Point the fingers back behind you. Press against the imaginary wall above you. Inhale, let's tuck the right knee to the chest. Stay there or extend your leg. Good, nice strong body position. The L shape helps us to understand the muscle memory of the stability, the activation, and the support from the deep core. Exhale, rock the body forward, swing the leg back. Good, and then find the posterior chain for five, four, three, two, and one hand on the mat stacked underneath your shoulders, palms flat, arms straight, shoulders broad, tiptoe the back leg, rock the body forwards, push with your strong arms as you consider swinging and kicking at the same time, and if you catch the balance, then beautiful, let's take a few attempts here, very nice, lift up the legs slowly, Okay, shall we try this one more time? Yeah, go ahead. Swing and kick. Good, one more time. Catch the balance there. Very nice, press. And let's do one vinyasa, that's okay. We got some good ones. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, down dog. Good, coming up on tiptoes, inhale. Exhale, bringing knees to chest, but this time allow the body to come down slowly to rest in a child's pose position on the mat. Beautiful. And take rest for a few breaths. So let's come up to a kneeling position and then with the hands together in prayer. Gently reverse so that the Palms face away from each other and the fingertips point downwards. Good, and then reverse back to prayer position. And then make circling motions like this. Front of the hands, back of the hands. Front of the hands, back of the hands. Circular motions. Okay, now with the breath, inhale. Circular motions all the way upwards. And then with the breath, all the way come forwards and down to the mat in front of you in child's pose. Uh -huh. Let's do this a few more rounds. Inhale up. <laughs> Exhale down. Okay, circling the wrists. Inhale, rise up. And if you have lost the breath, bring it back. Exhale, the breath is coordinating with your movement all the way down. And then inhale, let's do this one more time. And then this time on the exhale, arms come down to the mat behind you. Place the hands on the mat. Good. Inhale, open the chest, open the shoulders, and lift the chin to open your throat. Take your option here to also lift up your hips to find a baby camel. In here, start to relax the front body. Allow it to stretch and open. Release the tension created from our sequence with this beautiful pose. And stay active to find the height of the hips and the openness of chest and shoulders. Good. And exhale, let's release. Resting is happening in child's pose. And then from child's pose position, again come up. This time let's bring ourselves to a high kneeling pose, which means have your hips stack over your knees. And it is okay to separate your legs, but not too wide apart. Your knees and feet are about the distance of your hips. 
Support the back with your hands. Good. Lengthen the lower back. Send the hips forward to stack the hips over the knees. Inhale. Start to lift the heart up. Roll shoulders back. You are bringing yourself to the shape of camel. Ustrasana. Good. Find the support in the lower back with your hands. We'll take your option of holding on to the heels. Little fingers in, thumbs outwards to keep the openness of the shoulders. And you might be lifting the chin to open the throat if that feels comfortable for your neck. Or keep the chin to the chest to protect the neck. And then for the next few breaths, expand into the outward curve. Mindful to keep the heart lifting and that the lower back is not doing all the work. Create space for the lower back by drawing the tailbone downwards. Recruit and involve the upper body. And that'll do release gently and slowly. Let's come up as symmetrically as we can. And then resting is happening in child's pose, but in this child's pose, you might feel more comfortable with the knees wide apart so as to maintain a straight spine. Resting the body. Good. And then when you're ready, let's flip over to lie face up on the mat. Bring ourselves to happy baby posture. So holding the feet with the hands and separate your legs. Good. Gently pulling down on the feet to open up the hips. Release tension in lower back. Avoid the tailbone lifting from the mat in this position. And maybe a gentle side to side rocking motion massages out the muscles in the back and guides you into a deeper softening of the body. When you're ready, close the legs and let's do a reclining twist. You have the option to keep the knees and feet together, or perhaps you are crossing the right leg over the left leg like an eagle pose and bring both knees down to the left side of your mat. As you bring it down to the left, you can shift the hips slightly to the right to maintain a straight spine. And then now spreading the right arm out in any position that feels comfortable for your shoulder, perhaps fully extending. Or elbow bend takes you to a cactus arm position or arm overhead. Additionally, the chin goes all the way over to the right shoulder to allow the neck as well to participate in your twist. Good. Exhale, relaxing. Bring the legs back to the center again and cross the legs the opposite way or just take the option to keep the knees together. Twist to the right and the head turns to the left, spreading out your left arm. Staying connected with your breathing. Good. And that'll do. Slowly release. We're coming back to the center, unwrapping the legs and extending your legs downwards to rest on the mat in Shavasana. Corpse pose, giving rest to the body. So thank you very much for joining our practice. Stay safe and keep practicing with joy in the body and peace in the heart. Namaste and see you soon.